There is nothing better than a big, high-profile contrarian bet and two famous investors duking it out in public. And believe me, this is, this is real drama here. Uh, and I have a, a ton of admiration for investors that pull off these successful, contrarian, non-consensus trades and make a lot of money in them. And one of the best people in this area is Michael Burry. Now, if you don't know Michael Burry or, or barely heard about him, let me just give you three headlines here. Number one, this is a medical doctor. This is not even a, a Wall Street guy. This is a doctor that when he was in residency, started an investing blog that led to people noticing him, uh, giving him money. He raised a ton of capital, became a hedge fund manager. In 2007, 2008, he became very famous because he was one of the very few people that actually recognized the real estate bubble and made a ton of money on it. And you may have seen him played by Christian Bale in a movie called The Big Short, based on a book by Michael Lewis. And finally, lately, he was also in the headlines because at the end of 2020, he made $100 million on GameStop. And this is before GameStop became the meme stock um, in January, where, uh, you know, it completely went to the moon. And if, in fact, if Michael Burry held on to his position, he would have made a billion dollars. But still, he recognized an opportunity and made 100 mil. So look, this is real drama. This reminds me, the last time we saw this kind of drama was uh, a few years back when Carl Icahn and Bill Ackman were having a shouting match in, live on CNBC over a company called Herbalife that Icahn was uh, backing and, and uh, Ackman was shorting. And here we have really two investors that couldn't be more different. On one side, we have Kathy Wood that runs ARK Invest, which is kind of a really a non-traditional asset management company. And then Michael Burry on the other end, uh, uh, really a classic value investor that is looking at trades from um, a deep valuation kind of perspective. And here he's putting a big short against uh, Tesla and one of the high profile ETFs that Kathy Wood is running. So real drama. Uh, not because uh, simply of the entertaining value that uh, this actually provides us as investors and people that follow markets, but also because of what it actually says about the overall market. Anyway, let's talk about it. Kathy Wood and Michael Berry, or Kathy Wood versus Michael Berry. I mean, on the face of it, this is a bit of a strange phenomenon, right? Because both of these investors are actually non-traditional. They do, they do things their own way. We know this about Michael Berry, and it's been well documented in the big short movie and in the way he's tweeting about the markets and then deleting his tweets and kind of some of his opinions are out there. But he's been successful as an investor. When it comes to Kathy Wood, the way she's running ARK Invest now is completely non-traditional. The way she's hiring uh, her analysts, these are people that have very little financial analysis experience and education, but are PhDs or very experienced people in the 14 disruptive technologies that are kind of behind the whole existence of ARK Invest and that's driving their investment thesis. And by the way, they, they give all the research away. It's all public. You can go and read it. So I think that's amazing. I, I'm a huge fan of Kathy Wood and of uh, ARK Invest as a, as a company and as a, the way that they're doing things. But now that, that this short position that Michael Burry has against one of the ETFs that uh, Kathy Wood is running, uh, this, is, this is all in the headlines, right? And this came to light uh, mid-August, uh, so earlier this week, when the filings uh, that uh, funds have to make with the SEC, the 13 F forms, which show their position. So any hedge fund, any uh, asset management company that manages more than $100 million, they have to file these forms with the SEC 45 days after the end of the quarter. So typically, uh, financial journalists and analysts uh, look at these closely because we want to know what big hedge funds, big uh, family offices have in terms of positions. And so when you look at, let me show you these forms here. When you look at the sec.gov website, you can find uh, this form for Sign Asset Management, which is the company that uh, Michael Burry manages. And in the middle section here, in the document section, you click on the third link and that's going to give you the table of the positions that we're talking about here. And by the way, Michael Burry is not here betting against technology as a sector. You see, when you look at Alphabet, he's long Alphabet, uh, $230 million. Facebook, he's long $327 million, both through options here. But the two positions that are really attracting a lot of attention when it comes to him and uh, his positions, uh, number one is Tesla. You see that he's been, he's been short Tesla for a while through options, and he's increased the position by 20% in the last quarter. And now he's short $731 million uh, of Tesla through options. But the position that's kind of pitting him against Kathy Wood, the second line here in the form, uh, the ARK Innovation ETF. Uh, Michael Burry has a short position of $31 million through options against this ETF. 
So let's look at the CTF, what's in it and what the performance has been. Let me show you three screens from the Bloomberg terminal that kind of detail what's actually in the CTF and what the performance has been. And then we can talk about the rationale behind this short that Michael Burry is putting on and uh, the response that Kathy Wood uh, so far is putting forward. So this first uh, page that I'm showing you here, this is the description page for the ARK Innovation ETF on Bloomberg. Uh, and as the description paragraph says, this is all about disruptive innovation. You know, this ETF uh, at this point is pretty large. It's uh, 20, 21 billion dollars and it's grown exponentially over the last couple of years throughout the pandemic because a lot of these companies obviously attracted a lot of capital and grew exponentially as well. But so far this year, if you look at the performance, if you look at this chart here, this year the ETF really hasn't done anything. Quite on the contrary, it's down 7% year to date uh, in 2021. So from until mid-August when I'm filming this. And in fact, if you look at the highs that we've seen in February, it's down 30% from the highs. So really, when you compare this to the NASDAQ uh, 100 index, the, the benchmark for, for tech really, uh, it's up 15% so far this year. So this is a negative seven year to date versus up 15%. So this is a huge underperformance of these disruptive companies that are part of the ETF. And so looking at the details of what's actually inside the ETF, you know, the top three holders here, you have Tesla with 10.5%, Teladoc 5.5%, uh, Roku 5.5%. Teladoc is down 55% uh, from the February highs. So a lot of these companies sure are at the forefront of disruption, but they really haven't done much this year. Uh, you know, other companies in the CTF, you have Zoom, Square, Shopify, Twilio, uh, Palantir, I uh, was in the headlines a lot. Uh, Zillow hasn't done uh, great lately. Um, Twitter. So a lot of these companies are sure at the forefront of disruptive innovation, but when the market uh, is kind of hesitating for direction, and we have seen it over the last few weeks, uh, the market's kind of really not sure uh, where to go and looking for a catalyst. And when you compare this to the leaders uh, in the tech space, like Microsoft, like Facebook, like Alphabet, uh, which are trading, like Apple, which are trading at the highs, uh, this ETF really isn't doing very well. So what's really at the core of this argument for shorting the ARK Innovation ETF and Tesla by extension or some of these other companies? Well, before we get to Michael Burry, I think um, just for your education, regardless if you have a position or not, or whichever camp you sit in, whether you're in Kathy Wood's camp or Michael Burry's camp, you should read this uh, Twitter thread. I'm going to post it below uh, the video uh, of uh, an investor called Christopher Bloomstrand that posted, I think, 36 tweets in a row kind of analyzing um, the portfolio and the ARK Innovation ETF and the whole thesis that Kathy Wood is putting forward. And I think this is quite educational, actually. But when it comes to Michael Burry, this is not just about him um, effectively saying that the valuations are exaggerated, that the PE ratios don't make any more sense, uh, that the valuations are just sky high, that really it's not justified by the profitability or by the revenues um, of these companies. For him, I think the argument is much more about uh, well, inflation, really, because Michael Burry is a well-known inflation hawk. Uh, he famously compared the Federal Reserve's monetary policy to the Weimar Republic of uh, pre-war Germany uh, with the hyperinflation that was there. And the truth is that this whole argument, and I discussed this in one of my previous videos, is well known, right? If inflation goes up, then ultimately interest rates will go up. And if interest rates are going up, it's going to get much more expensive for investors to finance and fund the high growth companies that are really not showing any profits yet. And so the cost of capital for them is going to be much more expensive. So there's going to be less capital available for high tech, um, high growth, uh, Silicon Valley type of companies. But also in terms of valuations, when you value these companies, uh, the traditional valuations methods, uh, you're really discounting future uh, forecasted cash flows by some kind of, a, of an interest rate, uh, some kind of a let's call it a, a risk-free interest rate of some kind. Well, if these interest rates are higher, then you're really discounting, you're dividing by a higher number, leading to smaller profits in the present value, right? The valuation that you're looking at today in the stock market. So this is really the, the argument about inflation or non-inflation. Is the inflation uh, that we are seeing right now transitory or is this something that's going to be much more permanent, leading to higher interest rates? And Michael Burry certainly thinks that uh, interest rates are going to be much higher. Now, when you listen to Kathy Wood on the other end, and she talked about it today on CNBC, uh, this was a very, very good interview. She, she says, well, this whole inflation argument um, doesn't make sense. Uh, in fact, they are focused on deflation here. And she puts forward several deflationary kind of uh, arguments for why deflation is really the, the things that people should focus on. 
whether it's um, you know the fact that technological companies follow learning curves that ultimately lead to lower prices, or the fact that um, you know areas like commodities have really reversed uh, the whole rally that we have seen uh, last year. And for example, lumber prices are now one third of the prices that we had seen at the peak a few months ago. Steel is also coming lower. Uh, oil is coming lower. So the commodity super cycle really isn't um, uh, following through here. Used cars are also have peaked and will come lower. And so she talks uh, about what's really driving the thesis behind ARK Invest and behind the, you know, how they think about investing in these disruptive uh, innovation companies. And that's something that they call, a, I mean, it's a well-known concept in economics. This is the right law. The rights law is really a, a relative to the Moore's law. The Moore's law is all about a function of time, whereas the rights law is all about a function of units. And so they look at the price elasticity demand of um, the extra units and what uh, the disruptive companies will really bring in terms of how much more we use, whatever the new disruptive product is, right? So she, for example, points to uh, EV cells, uh, EV cars, so electric vehicle cars uh, globally sold 2.2 million uh, units in uh, last year, in 2020. Now, she talks about the fact that within one year from now, uh, EV uh, prices, uh, cars for electric vehicles, will actually be lower than the traditional gas-powered cars. And so the 2.2 million will really grow into 40 million by 2025. And nobody's really pricing that. And this is really at the core of the thesis that she has behind Tesla, uh, aside from all the other products that Tesla might get into, uh, the, the, the massive adoption of these cars and Tesla being a complete leader in the industry, in particular in the United States. So what to make of all of this? Well, look, I think first of all, this is amazing entertainment value. Just to follow the saga of two high profile investors kind of duking it out in public and replaying the drama that we had a few years back between Carl Icahn and Bill Eichmann, like I mentioned in the beginning. But I think if I had to pick a side, look, first of all, I think Kathy Wood is almost a little bit of a victim of her own success. These um, ETFs that she's managing became really high profile ETFs and they are being heavily shorted. But you know, in the long run, I believe she will prevail. I think the investment thesis behind what she's doing is correct. I think these companies, at least some of them, will completely change the way we consume and live, uh, whatever product it is that they are in. But in the short term, I think that trade actually makes a lot of sense. You know, when you look at that 13F forum that Michael Burry filed with the SEC, he's actually long a lot of tech companies. He's long Alphabet, he's long Facebook. And he's likely using the ARK Innovation ETF as a great way to hedge himself. Because when you look at the companies that make up uh, the ETF, that's a lot of high beta companies, a lot of companies that will have a much bigger drawdown in a sell-off uh, than some of the main players in tech, like Microsoft, like Apple, like Facebook. And so this is a great hedge in the short run. And, and I think it totally makes sense uh, to hedge yourself, especially as we are running into September, right? We are at the end of this huge bull market that we've had over the last 18 months throughout the pandemic. And September historically has been seasonally quite a weak month for the markets. So anyway, to be followed, to be continued, uh, certainly something that we should all uh, pay attention to, because like I said, this is going to be quite entertaining. Anyway, thanks for hanging out today. Make sure you give a like to the video. Uh, appreciate the uh, YouTube magical algorithm is always going to help. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you in the next video.